Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch 2020, our new show following all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hatfield, and I'm joined today by Jonathan Dornbush, host of IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond. Hey there. And Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. What's happening? And this week, we're comparing the confirmed games for both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Then we'll look into our crystal ball and make some educated guesses as to what big games might be coming in 2021 post-launch of the next-gen consoles. But Jonathan, let's start with PlayStation 5. Uh, According to the website IGN.com, there are 20 confirmed games for the PlayStation 5 so far. What would you say are the most significant ones that we know about at this point? Uh, Well, PlayStation is definitely in a weird situation because right now Sony itself has not really said anything about the games they have planned for PS5, with good reason because they have a few major PS4 exclusives to still get out the door. But um, right now I think the biggest ones to kind of focus on would probably be uh, Godfall, uh, which is supposed to be a launch title. It's a console exclusive. It's also coming to PC. But uh, this was confirmed at the Game Awards last year and is essentially a three-person, up to three-person co-op Uh, Looter Slasher, they're calling it. So familiar looter shooter gameplay, but with a more hack and slash sort of motif to it than shooting. Um, I think that one's going to be a really interesting tell for what we see from third party support, because obviously that one's also coming to PC. So getting to see how the PS5 stacks up two games that are also coming to PC, I think that's going to be a really big, uh, a a big interesting question mark to see how that one performs. Mm -hmm. And Godfall is the only console exclusive for PS5 that we know of right now. Is that correct? As of right now, yeah, that's the only one we know. Everything else is multi-platform, so stuff like Assassin's Creed Valhalla or the other Ubisoft confirmed games like Gods and Monsters, Watch Dogs Legion, uh, even Rainbow Six Siege which is go- and Fortnite, which are both coming to next-gen but are current-gen games as well. Uh, those are also going to be multi-platform at launch with Series X. Yeah, and so there are no first-party games confirmed uh, for PS5 yet, but of course... PS5 news is sort of a moving target. Sony has said they'll be announcing games soon. Uh, It could be as early as in in the next few weeks or so. So um, do we still think a sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn is a likely contender for a PS5 launch game? I've thought about it more and more since I said that on the show a few weeks ago, and as much as I would like it to, I wouldn't be shocked if that is more of a sort of launch window, maybe launch year, uh, like the following the following 2021 uh, holiday season sort of game, because I do think they're going to allow Guerrilla to take their time with that sequel. Sony has been really good this generation about letting devs take the time they need for those big flagship first party games. And so I think if Horizon isn't ready for launch, that will be okay to them. We we likely, I think, will hear about that one at some time soon, but Gorilla has even been recently hiring for some pretty major uh, positions for the team. So they're definitely seemingly pretty hard at work uh, on whatever they're working on next. I, I do think Sony will have stuff to show. You know, the PS4 launch had Killzone Shadowfall with it. It had uh, exclusives from third parties like Resogun, uh, Knack from the Sony Japan studio team, of course. Uh, so I do think we will see some first party support, but I don't know if we're going to get the big PS4 heavy hitters right out the gate. What about something like a Spider-Man Definitive Edition, considering Spider-Man is what they've been using to show off the faster loading times with PS5 anyway? Yeah, you know, that one would be great. I mean, we've all sort of taken Spider-Man 2, given its runaway huge, uh, sort of understandable success uh, as a sign that we're going to get a sequel. Um, That would probably be a pretty good candidate because unlike... You know, The Last of Us Part II and Ghost of Tsushima are launching so close to the PS5 that as much as we have talked about sort of expecting those to make uh, the jump to PS5, I don't know if we're going to see that immediately, whereas Spider-Man Insomniac has had enough time with that. They have a surprising number of teams that can be working on stuff at any time. They obviously have put out a lot this generation, both on uh, traditional uh, gaming front, but also in the VR front. So they, they have a lot of teams that could certainly be working on something like a definitive edition. And given they've been using that uh, behind closed doors Spider-Man demo that's been leaked to show how quickly it's going, as you've been said, uh, and how fast the PS5 can perform. I wouldn't be shocked as a, a likely candidate for something like that. All right, Ryan, let's talk about Xbox Series X. I believe there are 29 games confirmed for the Series X so far. Uh, and of course, uh, we know about more exclusives for Xbox's system at this time. Of course, there's Halo Infinite. Um, what else do you think are some of the more significant games that we know of for Series X at this time? Well, 29 versus, I think you said 20 for PS5, so that's it. The generation's over. Xbox wins this one. Chalk it up, guys. We did it. Um, but yeah, Congrats, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it was fun, right? 2020, we did it. 
Uh, no, it's it's a it's a really interesting list so far. I mean, Halo Infinite. It's I found it interesting, Jonathan, that that you're um, that you're thinking now that Sony might not bring a big first party gun to the launch party, which I mean, their history suggests that that that's not something that's uh, that's uh, that's out of the question given given the PS4 launch and even the PS3 launch and they they'll they'll have their heavy hitters in time but Microsoft is taking the opposite strategy which they they really have to you know they're the the big time underdog in this console fight right now and Halo Infinite has been positioned as the big launch title the the biggest and uh, most compelling reason that Microsoft is going to have to try and get you to upgrade to the Series X in the next gen, say, hey, we've got, we've never launched with a Halo game, not since the original Xbox and Halo. Uh, now, as far as other things that we know of, we saw in the Inside Xbox stream a couple weeks back. There's Scorn. There's uh, there's the Medium. Uh, we have uh, Yakuza coming over from Japan, and then there's the Ascent, which is our game that we've been uh, taking a deep dive in on IGN first so far. This month in May, which is uh, it's kind of Judge Dread meets Diablo. That was one of the more promising games out of the stream. That's a that's a day one Xbox exclusive for Series X. Uh, and then as far as stuff that's not there, I mean, we're going to talk more about that in a second. But the other big gun uh, that that I very much expect to be there is Forza Motorsport Eight, unannounced as of now. But I would be dumbfounded if that was not the sort of 1B to, to Halo Infinite's 1A game from um, from Xbox Game Studios at launch. Yeah, given that we haven't really heard much from Sony, just going back to Ryan's point, um, the biggest question marks, I think, going into what Sony's launch could be if they do hold back those big, uh, the big first party games that we know so well, uh, would be Bluepoint games that we know is working on a PS5 game, uh, but they haven't said what. A lot of rumor and scuttlebutt has suggested Demon Souls remake, but um, they did the Shadow of Colossus remake, and so they certainly have a, a pretty strong history with impressive PS4 Sony exclusive output. Um, you do have, as I was saying, in Insomniac, and whether or not it's Spider-Man, there is also the uh, Ratchet and Clank franchise, which we haven't seen for a few years, uh, but is pretty beloved. And having a family-friendly game at the jump, uh, at the launch of a holiday-focused uh, console launch, isn't a bad thing to have. And then, of course, you have Japan Studio as well, which has any number of teams that could be working on anything. So, yeah, even though I don't know if they'll have a Halo Infinite sort of uh, name recognition competitor, I do think we're going to see some stuff from Sony. It's just a matter of when they show us that stuff. R Ratchet's a great point, Jonathan. That could be a great one, and that could uh, sort of fill that knack void, except in a probably much better way than the play than the knack did for PS4. Launch. Yeah. That, that 2016 remake was great. Like, that was a really, really great game from them. And I think it, it just got overshadowed because, of course, their follow-up was Spider-Man. Yeah. And Spider-Man was a little bit bigger than that. But Ratchet is still pretty beloved among PlayStation fans. So to have such a recognizable name there at the jump would be good for the longstanding fans and, like, a wider mass audience, I think. Well, of course, uh, console launches can be a little rocky from a, from a software standpoint in terms of uh, quality and uh, quantity that's available. I wonder if the next Dragon Age would hit these next uh, next gen consoles in 2021. It will have been two years since Anthem was released, and we know uh, Bioware has a small team still trying to tinker with Anthem. Is there any possibility the next Dragon Age is going to be ready for next year? It seems a little early based on uh, the reports that were coming out around that Game Awards re-reveal from, uh, I guess it was what, last year? Or was it even the year before? Time has no meaning anymore. But uh, yeah, it's it, word is that it's still very, very early, and that team is uh, is is unlikely to rush because you know Bioware. Let's be honest, is is uh, from a fan perspective, from a reputation perspective, they're they're on they're back on their heels right now. Uh, their last two releases were not well received after years of of just being a beloved studio. You had Mass Effect Andromeda and then Anthem. So I suspect they'll take their uh, very sweet time, and EA will afford them that time. On Dragon Age, so I, I would not place my bet on Dragon Age for 2021. Yeah, Bioware, Bioware really needs to get their next game right. And there was actually a, an earnings call from EA in 2019 where EA said essentially that the Dragon Age, the new, next Dragon Age, was coming from Bioware, but it likely wouldn't be until after fiscal year 2022, which means most likely we won't see that game until at least after April 2022. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they're going to let them take their time with that. Um, there is uh, Dying Light 2, which was supposed to be out this 
spring, but then got delayed indefinitely. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that were a 2021 game now. That one had a really impressive E3 showing uh, last year. Uh, a lot of us came away really, really impressed. Lucy O'Brien did some fantastic preview coverage of that game. Um, and then, yeah, that indefinite delay was an unfortunate sign, but I think that means they're going to take the time they need to get it right. Uh, and so I, I would be pretty surprised if that game came out this year. So uh, next year seems pretty likely. What about Elden Ring uh, from software? George R. R. Martin uh, announced at E3 last year, uh, 2019. It's been quiet since then. Would we expect that to be a 2021 game? That one seems like it's it's a bit higher of a probability. Uh, that's that's one where on my Twitter feed, you know, I have a, a lot of Xbox fans follow follow me and follow IGN, and uh, that was one where heading into the Inside Xbox event from a couple weeks back, that was probably the number one game that people were like, oh, I hope I see Elden Ring there. So there's definitely a lot of anticipation for it, and it seems like given how quiet they've been, that maybe 2021 is, uh, you know, we still, there's, they've got 18 months between now and the end of 2021. So that seems like a, a decent bet. Yeah. Uh, there's also Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop, two games announced at Bethesda's conference at E3 last year. Uh, Ghostwire is from uh, Tango Gameworks. Deathloop is from Arcane. Uh, it's been quiet since then, but I wouldn't be surprised at all for those to come out next year on next-gen consoles. But what about Overwatch 2? Uh, we just re-reviewed Overwatch, and I think uh, the final hero for that game is out now. Would you expect the sequel to be ready for next year? That's a really tough one in my book because I, I do think, again, that's sort of a game that Blizzard will likely let them take their time with. Uh, but that said, you know, seeing that we have seen the last Overwatch hero be released does indicate to me that all focus behind the scenes is on the sequel and getting the sequel right. Uh, and they do really want to focus on cross compatibility between the two games uh, was a big talking point when they first announced Overwatch 2. So th this could be a likely candidate for next year. Um, it, it wouldn't shock me if we heard a lot more. We'll probably have a better idea once we see what Blizzard is up to later this year. You know, they normally do some announcements around their BlizzCon events. And even if they're not going to do in-person stuff this year, we'll likely get an update then. Sure. Uh, and then two final ones that I, I want to get Ryan's comment on. Uh, Saints Row the Third Remastered is out this week. Saints Row Five was supposed to be announced this year and it's supposedly deep in development. Uh, I, 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 you think it's possible Saints Row Five is a 2021 game? Definitely possible. Uh, that's one where where the the band is it, everything's all the pieces all came back into place for that with the the ownership of the IP and the and the original studio volition. Everybody's it's all in, in under one roof again with uh, under THQ Nordic and uh, same thing with Red Faction actually both of Volition's beloved IPs. And yeah, you're right. Saints Row they have publicly confirmed we're working on a Saints Row game. So uh, that does seem like that is entirely likely for uh, for next year because the remaster that I've, I've just posted my review on for IGN, that was actually handled by an, an external developer with, that Volition just sort of oversaw. So the, the heavy lifting was done outside of Volition, which means the, the core Volition team has been free to work on whatever the next Saints Row is for, for this entire time. Right. Uh, and finally, in 2017, Playground Games opened a second studio to focus on an open world game. Uh, Ryan, have you heard anything more about this? Yeah, so this, uh, I may have alluded to it on this show before. We talk about it on Podcast Unlocked a lot, but this is sort of the the poorly kept secret. This is, there's about a 90 plus percent chance here. This is a Fable reboot from a second team at Playground Games, which is now, of course, Fable was developed by Lionhead, uh, which was since shuttered by Microsoft, and the, the talent was uh, scattered to the wind. But Playground, uh, building a second team, now that's that's the Forza Horizon team. And it, it really makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because number one, uh, they have an engine that does open world and really cool weather stuff. So you'd really have the atmosphere already in place for a Fable game. And you'd have the talent, because while they're hiring a lot of new people and staffing up, Playground has proven themselves now over across four Forza Horizon games that they are an absolute world-class developer. So they, I think, are probably the best people to be handling uh, a revival of Fable, given, because, you know, you want Fable to have that sort of British humor, British charm, and they are a British developer and an extremely talented one. So Microsoft's got a, a finally, they're going to have a good problem in that, you know, typically 
the, the last most of this generation, they just haven't had uh, really any big first party games for for most of the year, particularly the fall. Usually they have one game, uh, one big game for the fall. And and in 2021, we can look and there are three legitimate possibilities for that. There's the, we could have Fable as their big holiday 2021 game. It could be uh, whatever the initiative is working on. Maybe it's Perfect Dark in a, in a revival there. Maybe it's something completely new. Uh, but they, it could also be a game we that I, I neglected to mention earlier and should have, which is Senua's Sacrifice Hellblade 2, which has already been announced and is, and is publicly confirmed, of course, announced alongside the Series X at the Game Awards in December. So any of those three, maybe we'll, we'll even, we're even so going to get so spoiled as, as Xbox fans now, maybe we'll even get two of those uh, for, for some time next year and next fall. So yeah, it's, uh, it should be really interesting. On the as far as you know that 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 mystery playground game that's probably Fable and and the rest of the stable. Well, dear viewers, we want to know which of these possible unconfirmed 2021 games are you most excited to play. Make sure to vote in our poll at IGN.com, and we'll share the results with you next week. Before we go, we have the results of last week's poll. We asked you how important are upgraded graphics to your next gen experience. The winner was uh, gra- the most important thing. Graphics are the most important thing. Just over 30% of the vote. But all of the uh, uh, possible choices were really neck and neck. Frame rate is more important, was only uh, two tenths of a point behind graphics being the most important thing. And then loading times are also at 27%. So all three of these things are very, very close to each other. Everybody wants great graphics, uh, frame rate, and fast loading times. And I think we're probably going to get all the three of those things. That will about do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch 2020. Thank you very much, Ryan and Jonathan. We will be back next week, next Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern with more PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X news. We'll see you then. Beginning in June, watch IGN's exclusive Summer of Gaming content for the latest and greatest in game reveals, news, trailers, next-gen coverage, and more. Tune in wherever you like to watch IGN or on IGN One on your Samsung TVs.